those people standing off the back, take a seat please, and we'll get started. Uh, we'll have a series of speakers, and, uh, a couple of short, very short footages, but it's mostly discussion. Welcome to all of you. I think that's just wonderful that you're all here. Acknowledge the, that we're on Camilleroy country, and thank Auntie Maureen for coming along here today. The original people and the uh, North West Alliance are all part of the same group who are working together in opposition to the coal seam gas and coal expansion in the North West. We're here because of an alarm raised on Facebook that Santos was drilling, or preparing to drill, 15 kilometres outside of town. Exploration and development of a commercial field has intensified in the last three months in the Pilliga. According to Santos, and this is off Santos's website, by 2018, there will be around 850 production wells in the area of the northeast Pilliga. Um, I'm not only a local councillor, I'm also a local businessman in town. They're telling you one thing, they're doing other things. It's trust, isn't it? The, the day that we spent with um, uh, Santos at Narrabri, every question that I had, and I had hundreds, absolutely hundreds of questions in relation to what was going on and how we were uh, supposed to uh, relate to this industry that we can't see, we can't monitor. Um, uh, look, they, they answered the questions very well, and by the end of it, if everything they told us was true, then they're probably right, but I'm sorry, I, I don't trust them. I put forth a motion that the Warrenbungal Shire Council does not um, support coal seam gas mining in this shire. Um, look, that was, that was upheld unanimously, and there was one small additive that was put to that motion, which still stands, um, is that until we have more information. There's a lot of clearing going on with coal seam gas. And this is particularly pertinent for the Pilliga. Perhaps less pertinent if um, you're talking about farmland. And if it's 850 wells, and that, that, that would, we're talking thousands of hectares of bushland here. The other big surface impact from a coal seam gas mining is uh, contamination, of course, of the surface waterways. Uh, widespread ecosystem collapse. Not too much about what I think about the environmental impact statements that have been done by Santos. This goes on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Bright light, it's like that, just down the road from you. And when they come down here and start doing 400 odd wells and this sort of thing, there'll be a number of these rigs, and the noise is tremendous. It's the clanging of pipes, but it's also the big diesel engine running the whole thing. Uh, we don't need it. Plus the dust from the trucks, you know, going along the roads and that as well, covers everything. Paul mentioned drawdown. Drilling these wells are using water. Thousands and thousands of uh, litres of it out of the aquifers, Great Artesian Basin and others as well. As well as that, they actually put in a lot of additives uh, to help stabilise the soil. A lot of these additives are toxic, and some of them are carcinogenic. I'm meeting with the chief scientist of New South Wales, Professor Mary O'Kane in Narrabri last year. I said, Professor, I don't think they can adequately seal those things, they'll have trouble. She said, as a matter of fact, Santos told me that this morning. I know they're going to leave, they don't care. There are a number of um, Australian health experts are starting to um, sound alarm bells about coal seam gas. Three conditions that need to be satisfied for industrial process to be considered a serious threat to human health. They are that the industry must use dangerous substances, the second, that they have to be uh, have to be environmental pathways which potentially bring people into contact with those substances, and three, it uh, has to be possible for people to be exposed to the pollutants in doses sufficient to cause illness. Estimate by Queensland Department of Environment and Resource Management listed that 18,500 18, kilograms of chemical additive per well is used per well and up to 40% of that is never recovered. So that still stays down with the possibility of getting into the aquifers. So that's, a, for me anyway, it's a huge concern. Well, I'm not a greenie, but I'm become an activist because, was full my heart, because out of my heart, I believe what's happening there, what they do in the big rush, without any people, without anyone really consulting, they just plunder my beloved Pilliga. The process is basically bringing um, the survey to a grassroots level and asking individuals within your community, 100% of your community, do you want to declare yourself gas field free? Actually, regaining our territory and letting them see that, that we 
um, have a really good strength within our, com our community and we've taken back their social licence that they claim that they've got. They have never, ever approached communities on this level to find out what we want and you hold the power. So when people say, you know, what can I do, you start at this level and you get your voice heard as an entire community about what you want. And when you start standing together and saying to them, we don't want this, and it's really clear because we have engaged everybody in our community, they can't refute it. That are involved in this now, in this area, are actually getting the message out that samples aren't welcome. In an unprecedented alliance of citizens, farmers, Aboriginal people, conservationists, townspeople, everybody that is resisting this destruction and industrialisation of our landscape. I just want to say that I really believe that the reason we got that national coverage is because of the arrests that preceded uh, the protest with 100 people last week. a local battle because Santos will say it's people from outside that are opposed, but we all know that it's local people that are opposed. Yeah. Now, as everyone said today, this is not the rantings of extreme greenies or a minority of professional activists from somewhere else, to quote the politicians and the gas companies. The information we've given here is researched and referenced. We didn't make it up. As you've seen on the ABC News, there were around 120 protectors, not protesters, at the camp uh, in the Pilliger on Thursday. Around 100 were farmers, business people, landholders and Aboriginal people from areas within and adjoining the Pilliger. Uh, they were locals. This is the biggest non-political social movement that's ever happened in Australia and we've got to keep it moving. Uh, we've got to finish on a happy note. So Kira Alexander is going to lead us in a song. <laughs>